so hi guys uh, welcome and let's wait for another two minutes okay so that uh, everyone would join this webinar and first of all can you hear me like uh, can you please uh, comment in the comment section
guys am i audible like shall we start now So okay, oh, it's time and let's start the session. So, so this session will be based on like a webinar on cyber security, and it mainly focused on students who are studying like tenth, twelfth, and you know tenth, eleventh, twelfth, and who is like waiting for some engineering courses, or you may be who might have seen. I mean, like the students who will be seeing this might have chosen. choose the uh, engineering so uh, i guess this will be a path to focus on cyber security courses in the college and you know like future also you could uh, you could flow uh, i mean get the flow of this cyber security and so uh, before uh, beginning the session let me introduce about myself and uh, yes I am Gyanesh, and uh, I work as an associate cyber security consultant at Secular Seven, which is a co-cyber security company in Pune. And yes, actually, uh, I have completed my uh, degree in 2015. Yeah, no, sorry, started 2015, and I have completed it 2019. And I am having a year of experience in cyber security. So um, yeah, actually, some of the terms might be like a Greek and Latin to you guys. so but you know uh, i will be explaining all the necessary steps to you at this particular age i mean like what do you want to know like uh, that is a thing called a red teaming so i will be actually explaining explaining those what a red teaming is and first of all i am pretty much interested in red teaming so i'll just let you know that and i have worked on a lot of web technologies such as you know uh, web applications web applications in sense whatever you use like facebook i mean like those are the web applications examples of web applications facebook and whatever sba app you use and anything you access in on uh, internet runs as a web application and another thing is like networks net what is networks networks is like you you sit inside a company and you will be having a lot of network of computers connected inside it so that i have tested that thing also and talking about the thick client applications thick client in terms what is thick client first of all the app which you download in your pc it's kind of an uh, you know like a microsoft teams you a zoom application or a facebook apply or a uh, facebook like application which will not be you know like opened in a web browser right it particularly uses a specific uh, application to access the internet and to get the content from it so that will be called as a thick client and obviously you know mobile applications applications which run in mobile and apis or stuffs you know like uh those will be used for gathering the informations from the back end you know like i don't want to go deep into it let's see further okay so these are the things i have been worked on and also like i have uh, i have some some of the certifications like oscp crtp and ceh these are some respected certifications uh in the cyber security domain so yeah and um, yeah here is dwayne johnson rubbing his head <laughs> so we will uh, be covering the topics of what is information security threat categories and what are the threat categories which is inside it and like who is actually a hacker who is called a hacker and i could see a lot of students thinking hacker in a different way but let's talk about that thing also and uh, okay what is a pen tester in i mean like who is a pen tester will be seeing we will be seeing that also and uh, okay that topic will be covered and we'll be seeing that time and uh, you know like uh, let's also see some of the attacks which should be happening around us so uh, we will do that also and what are the preventions and awareness we should take care like in order to be secure in this cyber uh, you know like cyber attacks mm, and then since you guys uh, i mean most of the viewers would be like uh, 
10th, 12th, and 11th students, you guys should have a grip of, you know, like you should, by this time, you should know what you should do after completing your school. So, uh, so I have suggested some platforms and certifications in order to get into the cybersecurity. We will also see that thing also. And uh, yeah, obviously, cybersecurity, this is the main path, man. You could earn a lot of money in cybersecurity. If you guys still wonder, you know, like, do, you, do I have to uh, join cybersecurity? Yes, of course you can. But this has to have some amount of, uh, you know, like, some amount of uh, interest in cybersecurity. So, guys, uh, yeah, let's get into it. And one more thing is like, can you please comment me? I mean, like uh, in the comment box, like, do you want me to continue in English or do you want me to continue in Tamil so that most of you guys, since it is, you know, like, uh, since this is the major part, so you have to decide whether you should go on a cyber security or not. So that will be focused here more. So uh, you can please comment in the comment section, like, do I have to continue in Tamil or English? I'm waiting for your comments. And since it's on live stream, I guess actually there will be a delay in my speech and the presentation. Okay, so I got a reply from a learn from whom. Okay, English. So okay, I'll do it in English. Yeah. So it begins. So first of all, in order to know what is cyber security, you have to know why cyber security have been implemented or have been, you know, like found. So then that is. Uh, there are a lot of cyber crimes which happen and which led to the path. You know, like for the uh, foundation of cyber security. So, what is a cyber crime actually? Cyber crime is nothing like you know uh, the crimes which deals with uh, digital devices like uh, a computer, a network device, or a mobile, and or any IoT devices. There are a lot of digital devices, and we use internet in them, so causing an you know like causing some criminal activities in those kind of devices or uh, data or anything causes is considered to be a cyber crime and digital data opportunities and motives so this thing is like uh, why cyber cyber crime is performed some needs someone's data right so that can cause a cyber crime or if someone needs an opportunity to perform that to perform something he uses this uh, crime to perform on those devices or he has some motive like to uh, like there may be a vengeance between uh, between a person who has already uh, you know like a friend of his or friend of her some he wants to take some vengeance on him so this kind of motive leads to a cyber crime and also yes crimes in which computing devices or computing devices in like uh, any devices which uh, you know like which uses a net or which access a yeah you teach in any language yeah, sure, sure, Tamil, take some money. Mm. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, what I was saying is like, uh, yeah, claims happening in computers, uh, which can be used as also a weapon. Like, you can input any, I mean, you can insert any Trojans inside. I will also uh, deal with all those attacks uh, later. I mean, like uh, upcoming slides. I'm just telling you uh, information. So, inputting all those. Uh, malicious files into a computer which can act as a weapon also so uh, some of the examples of uh, cyber security uh, i mean like a cyber crime is like identity theft what is identity theft is like the loss of your personal information and the credit card fraud credit card fraud is like you can have uh, <laughs> there are a lot of uh, uh, north indians uh, you might have known like call calling your parents and asking for us uh, sir you have been like your account has been deactivated 
so we need your credit card details to uh, further activate so that kind of frauds or some of the vulnerabilities uh, which will you know like lead to the disclosure of all those uh, credit card details and and yeah and lots of stuffs guys like software piracy <laughs> i guess uh, you students would have known about software piracy um, which is like a uh, using the cracked version of a software like consider uh, you have an uh, antivirus with a, which you have to buy for 1000 rupees but when you use a cracked version you get it totally for free so this is considered as software piracy yeah this is one, this un unto your knowledge this is also one of a cyber crime guys but this is not mainly like okay and uh, yeah botnets uh, botnets will be used for dos attacks which will be covering later and uh, social engineering also those topics will be covered later and and yes okay uh, so how do you you know like prevent from these cyber security attacks most of the cyber security attacks happen to your internet so if you purchase i mean like you have to purchase mine i mean like know that guys you have to purchase a proper internet security suits like a mcafe or avast or anything we have to purchase not crack one trust me guys crack i mean like the crack software will never ever uh, you know will be uh, able to find new vulnerabilities or a new uh, i mean like new exploits which is uh, going to happen so always buy a fully uh, paid version of any antivirus or internet security suits and always maintain a strong passwords for any accounts and also update your software so these can be a mitigations for cyber crime and yes here comes the cyber security and its needs why it is needed and what is cyber security so obviously if if you guys have understand what is cyber crime then cyber security it's easy so uh, it is something you know like for prevention of devices like those attacks from all those devices networks and data your sensitive information everything everything is uh, you know like it's secured in order to secure it cyber security arises and who can perform these cyber security so there are uh, types of hackers which we will be explaining in the following slides but who can perform these things uh, is like the workers i mean like the pen testers penetration testing it, these are the uh, professionals who work in a company to secure the applications of another company who gives so these uh, are the people who take care of the cyber security and there are a lot of type of hackers who does these also that we will be seeing okay hmm and why is cyber security necessary i mean like uh, it is needed if cyber security is not present what will happen first of all like the sensitive data is you know right lot of sensitive data include sensitive data in sense including your birth date i mean like a security a number or your passwords or your passport number those are even considered as a security sensitive data so if cyber security is not present what would happen to those data obviously it would be around the world and loss of money like if the companies the huge companies uh, top rating companies haven't implemented the cyber security what will happen to the entire data if one attack happens i mean like it would cause a lot of money and there are some cases which have i mean like uh, which have lost lost lot of money also and we will be also seeing in the end of the uh, presentation and to my knowledge uh, you know like if cyber security is not there cyber crime i mean like the future will be on the cyber war so i uh, i know i get it um yeah guys so on next uh, yeah i'm talking about the teams and pen testing so uh, as i said there is a uh, three divisions of cyber security teams which is one one is a red team one is a blue team and one is a purple team so as i said i was interested pretty much in red teaming right so what is this red team does it is it is a, a set of security professionals who works in a company you know this is called a team or uh, uh, a cyber security team in this a red team uh, you know a red team professionals will not be cons- i mean like they will not be uh, known to the entire uh, organizations i mean they act as a hacker like what is consider consider an organization example uh, um 
okay consider an organization uh, okay consider the consider a college uh, like a srm usually so um, there will be a particular team um, there will be a particular team which they will be attacking inside it but it is it is not like an uh, like an hacker who actually tries it from outside the um, college they are the team which they will perform within the um, i mean like on the college without the knowledge of any professionals who work there so it is like an uh, you know like they can actually be a hacker and implement all those uh, mitigations if they found any attacks so they will always try the attacks which they which an attacker will try and to find the vulnerabilities and exploits in that particular organization or any uh, any institutions so and they will be providing the mitigations to it uh, so i'm talking about the blue team this is actually red team so under red team is uh, is actually a wide domain uh, guys so uh, so interested you could also see a lot of stuffs about this since uh, i have to cover this entire topic uh, i'm just telling a glance so that you could just get a grip in the cyber security i mean like uh, interest in cyber security so uh, i'm talking about uh, yeah blue team so what is blue team guys these are the defenders these are the protectors of a company or an organization so as we are talking about the red team they would be invisible and they would perform all kinds of attacks they would try to find any vulnerabilities but this blue team they they will use they work for 24 by 7 guys so they will like you know uh, find any vulnerabilities which uh, are exploits exploits it sense an attack that is going to happen with an a hacker or an attacker into the company so they will always keep monitoring they have lots n numbers of n number of tools in their hand so they will be keep, uh, monitoring all the uh, incoming connections or going connections they are called as a traffic so they will be monitoring obviously if anything is suspicious they will just stop the process and they will just notify the uh, team that has to be uh, you know that um who is responsible for the fix so we are talking about the purple team then so what is considered a purple team as you guys uh, i guess you would have guessed combination of both red team and blue team is going to be a purple team so they do not like mainly focus on red team they do not mainly focus on blue team they does the both so uh, yeah these are the teams and kinds of penetration testing types so first of all what is penetration testing as i said professionals who work in cyber security they do this penetration testing penetration testing is like uh, you actually they will be providing you the entire application which has to be uh, hosted in the internet mobile or any other devices before the launch or or in some times or during the launch also uh, that particular applications or anything uh, which will be given uh, which will be given to the cyber security uh, pen testers so they will be doing the entire testing like an attacker like they will do all the attacks as possible i mean like as possible to find as an with an attacker mindset so that will you know obviously that will that will find lot of uh, you know like gaps and holes that an attacker will approach so that will be uh, th- those kind of attacks will be uh, given to the company so that they will be fixing those uh, gaps and holes so kinds of um, testing is like they have a black box testing and white box testing and a gray box testing so black box testing is like when a company provides you some uh, project or pro- mm, yeah you can consider it as a project consider myself like right? consider myself i work in a company but the thing is like when they give you uh, when you give you an application to test what is the black box testing they will not give you any kind of credentials they will not give you any information regarding the applications or uh, any data is provided so what we have to do is like we have to search this is going to be a complete an attacker scenario so cause uh, an attacker will not will never know any information regarding the uh, application present cause he doesn't belong to that company so so it works in that way guys so it is complete black box testing is you do not have any information and you have to test for it and uh, white box testing is like all the informations all the credentials will be given and you will be having a complete administrative access and still you have to find what are the uh, vulnerabilities and i keep using the terms of vulnerabilities a lot right so i will explain what vulnerabilities is vulnerabilities are the uh, weak points in an application like a weak uh, a location where an attacker can attack you get it 
so that's called as uh, vulnerabilities and one more thing guys uh, if you have any kind of doubts please comment actually as i said there will be a delay in the uh, screen sharing um so i guess uh, if you guys have commented i will surely reply but it would take some some time and okay so what is a uh, yeah what i was talking is a white, a white box penetration testing is like we will be given with all credentials and all the informations about the particular applications and we will be testing still for the vulnerabilities what if in case it is an insider attack insider attack is like you know uh, consider myself uh, working in a company i am an attacker i want to take a revenge on this company what will what will be my role i have i will be obviously having a credential in that particular organization so if i have an organization what are the uh, test cases or uh, what are the exploits i would be uh, performing on those uh, uh, organization so in order to te- find i mean in order to stop those things we will be provided with the white box testing so you will have the complete information and what is gray box testing you will have the partial information you will not have administrative access or you know you will not have the entire juice of the uh, data of the application you will be having some particular information that is needed for uh, the pen testing so uh, yeah i guess i guess i'll move to the next one and yeah it is kind of going to be like irritating cause it's going to be uh, some of the uh, theoretical stuffs which is going to be uh, getting into your head so i know you how you <laughs> react so yeah so uh, network threats application threats wireless threats cloud computing mobile threats host threats there are a lot of there is a threat in each and every devices in this world guys and that is why i i told you at the beginning that can be even a cyber war there, there will be no bloodshed here after if it's going to be a war for sure it's going to be a cyber war yeah so let's get into the network threats hmm okay so what is the major threat in a network it is because a lot of people get connected to the network nowadays right and one more thing is like the data which is connected to the uh, connected to the network it 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 does it just doesn't you know like um, get the information from within your computer itself it has to go to a server of the another um, i mean like another website you which you uh, which you are viewing and it has to come back to your uh, machine and inside that process you will be having a, a number of process for the data to be transmitted so each and every scenarios it may be vulnerable for the data loss so this is kind of a uh, threat in this things so there have been a lot of uh, you know like this network threats or the uh, major threats in the entire thing networks and web application threats so a uh, number of attacks in yeah it has happened uh, in a past few years so uh, regarding the uh, kinds of threats in network we can consider a virus a worm a trojan horse i will be explaining that thing and phishing password attacks zombie computers we will see about those things so virus worms and trojan horse these are the you know like first of all uh, i would like to uh, know the mindset of your uh, your age so when you consider a virus uh, you know like you people might have thought it to be something which is uh, so complicated that some particular hacker has developed it and that causes a lot of things i mean like a lot of distractions so to me i am explaining you guys virus is nothing it's just a small piece of code even you can create a virus so um, yeah so, and virus is like these viruses gets affected only you if with an user interactions so if you uh, you know like inject a virus it it does not automatically gets a uh, transfer to the entire network or a uh, or uh, any devices which is connected to it it just going to be executed which is in your device and that's it guys in order to transfer the same uh, to another devices or uh, another person who in order to be get affected you have to copy the virus and you have to put it in that thing so uh, let's see a sample code of a virus here like switching of a computer this particular piece of code which will actually turn off actually uh, yeah, that's cool right if you just send there will be a bat extension in windows 
dot bat if you just save this these this code in a particular bat format i mean like dot bat extension and if, if you just send it to uh, your friend hey just save this file what is going to happen once he is going to save this file and what okay what is this file and if you and if he clicks on and if it opens it's automatically going to shut down his uh, i mean shut down his or her computer so this is how a virus works this can be a simple like it doesn't have that much of security impact but this is just i'm telling you it is actually a piece of code that's it it is a code that does some actions when a human interaction is made and what then what are worms then okay so worms are like you know like they find a particular way to enter into your uh, host which is like it is same as uh, of a virus when you get injected it does, it just goes stores in your computer but the code which is inside the worms will have the capacity you know like to uh, to jump to the next networks if you connect any network or i mean any net or any computer to your network uh, which is affected obviously that worm is going to get replicated in that uh, another computer which is uh, which is uh, getting connected to that uh, particular network so that those are worms and what are trojan horses so trojan horses is uh, actually there is a story uh, behind it why this uh, trojan horse just go google it for that thing trojan horses is like uh, they reside in your computer they stay in your computer they actually you know like behave as an application which you will be using it but those will perform any unwanted or un- malicious activities malicious in sense any you know like um any actions that would affect your system so they would be performing such activities mm, yeah those are about virus and monsoon projects and yeah i have told you about phishing right phishing so this is, this is the one of oops oops I'm sorry so this is one of the you know like oldest uh, type of cyber attack this has been following for years so how this phishing attack happens okay so let's 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 start with an example uh, i myself yanish have a lot of friends you know uh, around me what if i use my system in a company or what if yeah i'm using my system and i have and my friends uh, know knows my email address so what he does email address or any social uh, media so that i could uh, view his message or her message so when i when an attacker he creates a malicious uh, as i said malicious is unwanted you know like unwanted actions or uh, unwanted actions yeah those kind of uh, files like a hacking a hacking uh, software or the, consider a, as i said a, a bat virus like a virus which can which can be written in a bat format consider that thing for now like what if he creates a, a that bat file and he stores in his server and he creates a link for that particular uh, uh, file which is stored and he will be sending it to the uh, you know me he will be sending it to me with an email or any social hey dyanesh uh, if you want to get 1000 rupees please click on this link i have tried and it is successful so what will you do i mean what will myself what will myself what will i do so i obviously need the 1000 rupees 1000 rupees who is going to miss guys so i obviously going to click that thing and this can be like not only with the uh, uh, you know like particular malicious software to be downloaded i consider okay consider this thing he has actually hosted a uh, facebook cloning which will be which we will be seeing also further he has actually there will be a facebook page which he can clone it in his own server he can pre- he can create a lot of you guys might have known a html and css lot of things right so you can even create your own website looking to that facebook and there is a tool called uh, for dumping those uh, facebook as such as it is so we'll do that also he is hosting in a server and once if that link is sent to me uh, in order to win 1000 rupees please log in with your facebook password so what will i do okay it's just the uh, normal page it looks authentic authentic is like it looks correct so i'll be entering all my username and uh, password in that particular uh, login page and i will be clicking on enter so what it does actually that is not the real facebook page which you will be uh, given once if you click on submit your username and password will be redirected to the attacker that is with, that is in, in this case to my friend so he has done the same way like uh, he has a, a trust in me 
so it is like uh, making making the victim trust an attacker and sending an email so that he clicks on a link and opens and he gets the all the sensitive informations regarding that thing so um, tools which uh, actually there is a specific os to perform all these uh, you know uh, attacks uh, um, yeah attacks so uh, uh, yeah as i was saying like uh, there is a specific os called kali os in that thing you will be having n number of tools where you could use uh, to perform all these attacks so example one of the thing is like a social engineering toolkit um, kingfisher tool and hd tracks these are uh, you know like um, as i said this hd track thing it actually clones the entire website into uh, your system so that you could host it in your server and you could display it as the uh, original facebook page or any web page i'm taking facebook as an example so uh, yeah i actually like to show you some physical demos i mean like practical demos here but since due to the management rules i'm not i shouldn't be doing that so if you have any doubts or if you have to like follow these steps please ping me guys I'll, at the end of the session i'll give my uh, contact detail so on that next thing is like password attacks yeah what is a password attack like why is it called as password attacks targeting the password of an you know like a user uh, obviously a lot of websites and a lot of uh, any any login pages will have a password to log i mean to get logged in into an uh, application so what if you get the password so obviously it's a password is a most critical sensitive information if you get a password you can do anything so what are the passwords why they are recommending you to use a strong password so that will be seen here so password attacks there are a lot of types there are dictionary attacks brute force and traffic and all those things so what is a dictionary attack dictionary attacks or if you just google uh, google it i mean like uh, not google dictionary attacks if you just google like a uh, password dictionary files uh, for brute force attacks there will be a list of n number of files like n number of files in sense there will be n number of passwords i mean like the most commonly used words in this world and most commonly used passwords which has been leaked for the past years they would be storing uh, i mean like they would be stored in that particular file and you could use those particular file to randomly hit the password fields um, at this stage you would have not got that thing like how would that thing happens uh, if time permits i will show you that how it works not a practice i mean like <laughs> not that you can hack into it i will show how it works if time permits and uh, yeah so this is that the particular uh, you are attacking the web application with that particular uh, uh, dictionary file and what is this brute force brute force is similar to dictionary attack but the thing is like consider uh, consider your friend um, you and your friend you obviously know uh, what are the things your friend friend likes right so you can create a list of words which your friend uh, likes and you can create it as a file and you can use those file to uh, directly attack the uh, password fields with that thing and traffic interception traffic interception is like yeah there are a lot of tools to uh, intercept the traffic so when you are accessing accessing example consider uh, twitter.com you would obviously need need to enter the username and password so during that thing uh, what an attacker does is like he uses some specific tools like web server or anything so that he could uh, intercept the network before going to uh, the twitter.com so obviously the passwords and this username which you entered will be shown to the attacker and then it will be sent to the uh, twitter.com what's the use he is going to use your password again so this is a kind of attack and keylogger attacks what are keyloggers keyloggers are uh, simple exe or uh, malicious uh, exe files or any kind i mean like it's for windows exe is for windows executable files and which will be put into your system unknowingly by any any means like a friend can insert a usb and can put into it or by a means of phishing uh, means of phishing like he can uh, send you uh, send you through a, a phishing mail and he, he could have uh, installed it unknowingly so uh, that what it does is like it actually uh, if you enter hello all those keywords which you enter will be getting stored in the keylogger and it will be transmitted to the attacker so this is a kind of an attack and man in the middle attack as you can see in this particular image so here is an user you know actually he wants to send a direct 
connection to the web application which he uses like he has to send it to the um, what I said like a, a twitter.com so what an attacker does is like he will be connected along uh, to the uh, user's network so he there are a lot of many apps to intercept I mean like to act as a man in the middle so there are like a Xanti a mobile application you could explore that thing actually I'm really interested to do those uh, <laughs> practical thing but yeah see no restrictions mm, yeah you could uh, explore the name is Xanti you could use those application to you know like play this attack a man in the middle attack what he does is like he actually grabs the entire session and he makes the user think that he is the uh, you know like twitter.com so he he does all the things and he changes and and he forwards the request request is like that uh, the connection which is made to the uh, which is made by the user and then he will be forwarding it so all the sessions you know like all the cookie there will be a lot of uh, uh, you know like cookie they will call it as cookies which will be responsible for that particular user who is logged in all those informations will be uh, known to the attacker so this is a kind of an attack and another thing is like social engineering attacks so what is so this is an interesting kind of an attack which is a uh, which is happening nowadays also so um, it is like totally disclosing your information to an attacker yeah like uh, consider or uh, consider yourself and that is a that is a um, you know like a friend request uh, in a facebook well uh, the friend talks is i mean like talks more to be uh, uh, you know like uh, consider uh, it to be uh, any anyone and she and she or he you know like they are talking uh, very well so she first she or he first of all gains the trust and this happens mostly uh, to boys <laughs> As, <laughs> as I have seen a lot of things that uh, consider a boy and consider a boy who uh, who creates a fake account and he gives a request and he gains all the necessary needed information first she has to gain the information of him right uh, I mean sorry uh, he has to gain the trust for him and then by doing some activities uh, he can uh, uh, I mean like uh, by gaining the trust he can act she can actually get the password details and everything like all the most sensitive informations regarding this. this is the social engineering attacks so our uh, next thing is the zombie computers or bots so what are zombie computers yeah first of all I will show I will explain you this uh, particular uh, diagram so one there will be one attacker right this attacker will send entire amount of uh, I mean like will send all the malicious softwares or files that he could use uh, yeah as you can see here this is a trojan horse this is a virus and a lot of things worms and anything so he would be uh, uh, consider myself okay i'm creating a thing and uh, i'm sending it to n number of to 5000 to 10000 people with the same mail so once what what happens is like after uh, i click on this particular uh, uh, link obviously that trojan or tro worms or anything is going to get inserted into the particular computer so now I will be having bots on every, uh, I mean now I will be having, uh, you know, like a control on every devices, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't mean like uh, I have a, I have hacked this computer. It, it is like I have a small control on his so that whenever I use, I need, uh, I need something I could retrieve. I mean like I could use that as a victim uh, system. So this is mainly used for a DDoS attack. What is a DDoS attack? Denial of service is the DOS attack. And distributed denial of service is called as a DDoS attack. So DDoS atta attack is like when a server is capable of handling 100 requests. I mean, like consider 100. Consider google.com. When 100 users uh, uh, access google.com at the same time, it can handle. But what if, uh, what if, one not one person i mean one not one request request instance i use one not one users act i mean like uh, uses the uh, google.com so that's obviously gonna crash the server so google is now a pretty much server so i'm just telling it as an example okay so don't consider one not one request so this is the main scenario here so he will be using some 5000 10000 or n number of this has to be planned uh, i mean like planned for years for this attacks to happen and we will also see the real attacks that has been happened with these kind of things so this is the thing guys zombie so they actually make your computer actually an attacker make uh, another user computer act a victim and he could request 
I mean like he uses those computers to request the uh, targeting domain. Targeting domain is like targeting uh, any computer or uh, he, he uses to target Facebook in sense. He will like uh, uh, create a worm at the time, every time, every uh, victim's machine, uh, every uh, botnet inserted in the inserted in the machines will be contacted to the facebook.com. Obviously, a lot of n number of requests is going to be uh, generated on the uh, Facebook servers. So uh, it will crash the server. So that's it. That's the concept here. And yes, talking about the application threats. Hmm, a lot of applications, as I said, uh, when you use uh, uh, Facebook.com, Google.com, all our applications, um, even mobile applications. So these comes under application threats. And what are the uh, common application threats you will be having? So let's see. Uh, SQL injection as you might have studied if if you have uh, guys have taken CS group you might have known uh, what is an uh, SQL so they develop for the um, they are uh, used for developing a database and retrieving information from a database so attacks on SQL injection uh, you know attacks on SQL injection yeah that that can happen in a web application which will like consider a database and in order to log in like you have to enter your password and your uh, your username so that it uh, it uses a lot of queries they call it as queries and if that particular query matches the database that would uh, retrieve i mean that would give you all the information regarding that uh, particular user but what if if you just um, i couldn't uh, show you in a practical demo but just have this information these kind of attacks are there so what if like um, I do some malicious activities in that particular field like I break the SQL, uh, I mean like SQL query before and I have given some malicious activities later. It would actually dump me the entire content which is in the uh, database. So by doing this I could uh, I could easily you know like uh, get the information. And one more thing is the OS command injections. OS command injections or what? Wait, I would show you. Mm. So OS command injections or uh, okay. So this is PWD, right? What is this? I mean, sorry, DIR. Okay. So DIR is nothing like directory. So these are the OS commands, commands which you enter enter in the command prompt or a CD or a system info which gives me the entire details of my system so this is these are the commands which you know like uh, which is used in the uh, system so an attack which happens with the commands uh, i mean like some uh, input parameters they accept these commands so it is uh, it is a vulnerability right uh, just a minute so consider a place where you have to uh, insert uh, where you have to enter your application, I mean, enter your username and that particular uh, username or any value. And after that, if you have given, uh, I mean, like if you if you give any uh, OS commands, it's obviously going to get, uh, uh, I mean, it's obviously going to uh, giving you the information which is regarding the OS which is hosted, uh, I mean, which the application is hosted. So this is the kind of attacks and uh, there are n number of attacks, guys. Um, <laughs> Actually, uh, I will show you. I mean, I'm, I would say you should be easy. Like da data tampering, you could um, use these uh, words to just Google the internet so that uh, you could get a lot of knowledge about those attacks. I'll just move forward. And for example, data tampering is like, uh, what if uh, you uh, consider you uh, some you buy something in Amazon? There are a lot of tools, uh, you know, like to intercept the request which you sent by yourself. And that particular, if you buy, purchase something for 19,000, that particular value will be generated in the uh, interceptor, as I call. I mean, I mean like as I said, uh, there is a tool which can intercept the request, which which can uh, get the request first and then can forward it to Amazon server. So that happens, right? Uh, at that part, part point of time, if it is not properly validated, what if I change the 19,000 to zero? obviously the request is going to go with a price of zero value right uh, and once again this is called ta uh, data tampering and uh, i will be showing this uh, not in terms of attack how this happens and also if time permits and yeah there are a lot of uh, wireless threats which is happening 
uh, example a rogue access point a rogue access point is like <clears throat> what do you consider uh, if consider uh, you working in an uh, i mean like uh, using your uh, college or uh, school or i mean you a uh, wifi user and um, yeah uh, even on an uh, organization wifi what if an uh, attacker he himself creates an access point like he himself create an a uh, wifi uh, wireless access point and a uh, lot of people are going to trust okay uh, uh, going to trust that okay this belongs to this company or this school or this uh, um, this college and he is going to get connected to that particular uh, access point and after that thing what is going to happen everything every uh, request which is uh, which you going to send is going to be sent with the access point created by an attacker and that you could uh, retrieve a bulk of data i mean all the traffic which you sent through that particular uh, access points going to be uh, retrieved by the attacker this is one kind of an attack and denial of service as i said you could send n n number of i mean like 1000 10000 requests to the access point to uh, totally uh, you know like um, to that totally crash the access point so this this is also possible a lot of configuration problems um, you might have known modems right uh, the, so that that thing access as an access point in your home so uh, mm, there are a lot of misconfigurations in the modem that without even logging in you could uh, you could uh, use the main uh, configuration page of your modems you could you could actually start so i mean surfing the internet for these things and yeah passive capturing is the same thing which i was uh, talking about the rogue access points it is similar to the that thing like uh, you don't have to uh, Uh, directly interact with the person you just create an a uh, like fake access point and you just capture all those requests so here comes the part who is an hacker i know you at this point of stage you know like uh, these students you stood you guys uh, might have think that this um, hacker is someone who hacks facebook has instagram hacks uh, whatsapp all of a sudden just like that guys the, at this stage everyone will be like thinking like that thing so uh, erase that part in your of i mean erase that part in your mind okay so hacker is something there are types of hackers who uh, yeah as i was um, i mean like as i was about to tell you that there are black hat gray hat and white hat black hat hackers are the original i mean like the term hacker defines them it's it's a uh, it's for them those are you know like uh, those are the hackers who just uh, um attack attack any organization or any person which they may have some, uh, it may be happening for fun or it may be happening for a uh, for a revenge or any motives uh, which might which may they, uh, which they might have so what is a gray hat hackers they oh, first of all i would like to tell you white hat hackers so white hat hackers are who the cyber security professionals who work in a company to secure the applications right so these are uh, th- those are called as a uh, white hat hackers and who are the gray hat hackers gray hat hackers or the persons who can or, i mean like who works as a <coughs> cyber security professionals and also can attack so these are the uh, persons who are known as uh, gray hat hackers so yeah there is a fun meme here and uh, there is a lot of game websites uh, which you have to which doesn't require any uh, information to play and students might have think that they are an hacker so yeah as you was talking pen testers in aca- attackers perspective so by this time you might have knows who who is a pen tester as i said cyber security professionals who work in a company or anyone who 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 likes to work for the security of the company like they are called as a pen testers so why this why they have been uh, you know like a uh, phone they need to i mean like they should have a knowledge of an attacker perspective like how an attacker or a hacker is gonna uh, attack some organization so, so that will be the main thing of this pen testers right so they have to uh, g- gain all the knowledge uh, from an attacker perspective but they really work for the security they don't like really attack so these are the pen testers so uh, um i would just go fast in this thing like this is going to be theory um yeah okay footprinting these are the hacking phases like uh, these are the things like how an attacker would enter or uh, would uh, like to attack an organization let's consider okay let's consider an sanmishwari college 
who an attacker i mean like a an attacker has to attack so uh, let's see something okay so uh srm ishwari yeah so first of all the first thing is like footprinting right so this is the first phase of an attacker uh, yeah this is because of os is because some tactical information so you're going to see footprinting is like this is the first step an attacker um, he will be using it on an organization i mean on the target system so this is like uh, getting all those informations initial information which the which are target users so now if you want to target srm ishwari um, this is actually srm ishwari is totally secure and you can't do anything i'm just uh, telling you this thing so initially this is a tool which uh, tells us what are the uh, you know like uh, things uh, which uh, which are used to create this particular uh, applications and what are the you know like they have used a programming language php they use a wordpress cms and they have uh, you know like the wordpress cms is 5.4.1 version mm, yeah lot of stuff right and they use my sql database as i said i was talking about sql injections right you could uh, um if it is not used properly you could uh, create and this is cd and cloud fair is a uh, is for the protection guys so uh, mm, you know this this these are the some basic footprinting informations and then comes the uh, like i'm just showing you some demo i mean like uh, this is the one of the footprinting there are a lot of n number of tools to be followed for the footprinting this is the like initial stage how and what does this things um have and reconnaissance is like further collect informations it's like the next day i mean it's all in the same phase reconnaissance is like there are two kinds uh, like active reconnaissance and passive reconnaissance passive active reconnaissance is like you directly deal with the web, entire website i mean like if there is an uh, Mm, what to say if there is an uh, any login page here you directly interact with the login page and you find it what are the uh, you know like uh, what are the uh, tools or what are the uh, functions which is available in that thing so you can actually deal with uh, that that is going to be active re uh, reconnaissance that is the direct interaction with the target and the passive reconnaissance is like uh, okay uh, consider uh, consider a staff at srm ishwari who knows the wifi password you know uh, he in order to uh, not to forget the password he writes in a paper and he unknowingly throws that uh, throws the paper somewhere what if he has uh, you know like what if an attacker gets the paper sure right he could have um, he could use that thing to perform a lot of actions and uh, yeah the next phase is like scanning so scanning is like uh, the information so which you uh, i mean performing further attacks with the information you got from the first phase so first of all gather the information for the uh, what the target i mean like srm ishwari it is like it's going to be the purpose for uh, a college like similarly you have to find the purpose of the thing uh, if you go for amazon it's obviously going to be uh, for a e-commerce website so in that kind of you have to find the target of the uh, ta i mean like the purpose of the target and uh, yeah i guess uh, i guess uh, you would have you would have not known about these ports and all so i will just give an example like you consider this https right https is 443 right and uh, http is port 80 these are the uh, you know like uh, a communication channel which those data should be uh, sent in an uh, in an application so just for the, for for the time sake just know these uh, things and um, if an application has an unwanted ports open or any malicious ports open open um, an attacker could easily attack using that thing so uh, these are the things you have to like uh, enumerate uh, these are a lot of tools actually uh, i thought of uh, showing you these tools uh, but since already time is spell i just move forward um, these are the tools which will be used you know like nessus it is a kind of scanner which you would uh, which which would actually if you just input the ip address of that website uh, actually nmap will find you the ip address of that particular website or particular computer or particular net or device anything you could input those thing into a nessus so that you will get a lot of vulnerabilities i mean what are the available vulnerabilities in that uh, in 
uh, in that application or in the network. And Burp suit once again, it another uh, it has a tool called Scanner, which would find which would find all the uh, I mean like uh, available uh, vulnerabilities so that uh, uh, you could easily find it to attack. And the next step is like enumeration. Mm. The attacker establishes an active connection. So enumeration is like uh, you directly get into the. I mean, like you use one of the functions in that particular system to get the information uh, from the system. Mm, for example, uh, okay, uh, as we have seen, uh, yeah, I would actually show this to you know, like so that you could understand. Enumeration is like first. Uh, you uh, finding usernames of that particular uh, website can be considered as an enumeration. Gathering information uh, which would lead to further uh, attacks is called as an enumeration part. So we would actually uh, see some small, you know, like enumeration part. So it is of no use, but you know, like I would just show you guys how an uh, enumeration is done. So this is SRM Ishwari and uh, as we have found from the initial fa initial phase, it works with WordPress 5.4.1, right? So there are n number of tools similar to this thing. Like uh, if you find any interesting stuff, you could uh, do that thing. So what if I use So this is a tool for scanning the vulnerabilities which is present in the WordPress. So what? Uh, no. So what this gonna does is like find any uh, find any vulnerabilities which is uh, present in that particular website. So we will actually wait for some time. Okay, uh, so I'll show this once it gets completed. Yeah, it started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys, as I was talking about the IP address, right? So this this is the IP address, but since they are using a Cloudflare, so this is the, uh, you know, like you don't, you actually will not get the uh, correct IP address of this thing. This is a Cloudflare IP address. Okay, I'll proceed with the next topic and uh, once the output comes, I'll show you. So this is the enumeration part and getting the uh, use as you can see this there is a tool called enum for linux which you could input the ip address and it would list uh, there is a smb shared uh, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff guys so these are the in, uh, enumeration part and yes obviously back to theory so since uh, i would not uh, i'm not allowed to show you some hacking stuff so this is going to be a theory so system hacking so what is system hacking is like actually you are entering into a system or entering into an application of that particular user you are having a total gain to that uh, you know uh, your, your target uh, system or your target so this is like uh, an attacker successfully finds a way to hack yeah once he after the enumeration part enumeration part he finds a way to get into the system so that um, he could perform all sorts of possible attacks after that thing so the next phase is like escalation of privileges. Privileges is like you will be as you could see in this diagram. You, once you uh, you know like enter into a uh, system of uh, your I mean like your target like the victim and attacker. Once he enters into a victim, he will be having a normal user access where he will be restricted to perform a limited actions. Consider your system. There will be an administrator user or consider your. Uh, system i mean labs which you will be using in your schools you will be provided with a user account right 
you will not be having an uh, administrative access or the same applies to a college and everything so if one access is uh, i mean like if an attacker was able to access that particular account he will be first given with this privilege he will not have some uh, extra privileges to perform all the actions so he have to escalate all the privileges from step by step and to uh, become as an administrator and this nt authority system is the total uh, you mean like a total access to the uh, particular uh, system or a target so this is the phase of an escalation of privileges and there are a lot of n number of tools which can be uh, used on this thing and the final phase is like covering tracks so what is the use if an attacker you know like uh, uh, if an attacker left some piece of information where the security team finds that there is an attack uh, happen and we have to secure it so that will be a new uh, i mean there will be a no use of an attacker uh, uh, that he has uh, done right for the particular time he will be having the use but what if an attacker wants to perform all the sorts of information i mean all the sorts of attacks for a future i mean still he wants to continue all these attacks whenever he likes so what he what he will do is once after gaining the information he would just delete all the information regarding to the activities uh, of the um, you know like uh, regarding to the um, the hacking which has happened so he would be deleting each and every logs like he would be uh, deleting the malicious application which he has put into it for the uh, attacking to be happen so he will be deleting it and he will be deleting the malicious scripts also on or, or else uh, if and also there will be a logs present uh, each and every time when you uh, enter or each, there will be there is a, the logs are mainly you know like uh, focused in the uh, blue teaming part so they will be maintaining a log to uh, to find any uh, attacks as happen still how many minutes yeah take simply just few minutes we will end the session mm, yeah so and creating fake evidence is like uh, you create a like i uh, mean like uh, a log which is related uh, i mean like which is uh, authentic authenticable so that will not be any suspicious right so these are the uh, process of a covering tracks and uh, yes so uh, this is like vulnerabilities which has happened around i mean like attacks and vulnerabilities which are around us and which are still happening and this was an attack on instagram so yeah and before this i would show you yeah so you have seen this right so <laughs> this is the wp scan of this is the which belongs to the enumeration part which i was talking and if you could see he does all sets of informations which is regarding um, yeah also here you find the username of the wordpress there is a login page also but yeah it's also like i've said it's more secure so we can't do anything with it so this is one of the uh, types of enumeration so and um, yeah let's go uh, so already 12 12/7 so one of these around is like this attack is a happen in instagram it's like a complete account take or account take over in sense you are completely uh, you you can uh, consider me and myself as an i mean like me and uh, my friend has an uh, instagram account and what if i uh, hack the, my friends account it's not my friends it's everyone's so it's like this is the uh, as i was talking like uh, the term intercept intercept right so this is the uh, kind of an interception you intercept the request before send it to the um, instagram servers so it is like each instagram has an uh, you know in order to recover the password you will be using uh, you will be using an otp right so if i click on the username and if i click on the forget password it will be asking for me an uh, otp so what if i uh, you know like uh, obviously that otp is going to be sent to my friend's mobile so what if i try to uh, brute force that thing obviously it's going to be a six or a four digit numbers and Uh, what if i uh, used to brute force those uh, numbers so that i would get the correct numbers and i would use it here in this particular field recover code so once this is done i am just going to get uh, logged into uh, logged in as the particular uh, i mean like in this case uh, my friends account since i have used this uh, email to get uh, to get the code so this is kind of an account and this and they provided uh, lakshman uh, mutaya this is this was on this by the security professional and he was given i guess around 40 lakhs for this particular bug he has he has submitted in uh, uh, instagram and there are a lot of stuff so i mean lot of attacks that has happened like a uh, uh, sorry it's capital one breach capital one is a branching i mean like a banking company they 
an attack happened here it's like the lot of uh, you know like credit uh, credit card informations uh, in that company has been leaked it uh, it, it just happened by an uh, con- misconfiguration in an amazon web service cloud so they have hosted it in the cloud and the employee who i mean uh, she uh, her name is thompson yeah she has worked in the company and what she does is like she totally uh, leaked all those information with the uh, misconfiguration which is found in aws and citrix breach citrix is one of the you know like uh, a top leading company which uh, which produces a vpn for secure network Cons- just think these they, they are in the cyber security field and even they uh, there are some attacks which is happening in that particular cyber security you know like uh, big hedge so um, as i was saying there was a password spraying attack uh, which has happened in a citrix breach like uh, they randomly throw consider a citrix user he, he has said just a password called a uh, password 123 and how how long it's going to take on a hacker for uh, you know like uh, using that uh, particular password so by that thing he, he actually uh, got the internal internal networks of the citrix so that is one kind of an attack and recently cts cognizant has been attacked with a ransomware attack ransomware or uh, you know like those or uh, mm, yeah by your terms you can call it as a, a virus kind of things which will encrypt all the data is like you you will not be able to open the file unless and until you provide a key to open it so that thing has been uh, attacked in the uh, cognizant and uh, it is almost expected that 50 million to 70 million loss in that um, due, due to this attack so uh, yeah the thing is like <laughs> prevention and awareness right so please do update your devices for each and every update which they have given i mean like which the uh, uh which the organization is uh, you know like releasing or uh, if facebook releases uh, an update please do update it may be either a functionality update or maybe a security update so please do update it that thing and do not open any unauthorized links and so, so this is the major cause of the phishing attacks so please don't uh, verify whether it is an uh, authorized email there are a lot of tools to do that also an email does verify also you can also do that thing so and uh, do not connect to public open if you have a, a, a common scenario is like when you uh, go to a railway station or any public uh, or a cafe coffee day cafe coffee day and uh, you find you seem to have a public open wifi so once you get connected to that wifi if it's not an uh, original uh, cafe coffee day or a uh, railway station wifi it may be a fake an attacker's uh, access point so that thing you're going to get uh, attacked and uh, ensure passwords are complicated do not use passwords like password 123 or a hello or yeah those kinds of uh, simple passwords should not be used and disposable and infom- uh, dispose information properly once as i said uh, uh, you know like uh, writing a piece of passwords in a paper and throwing it is not a uh, recommended way it should be disposed properly and uh, Uh, lock your computers when you leave main thing actually still there are a lot of uh, you know like uh, it's actually for fun uh, activities going on if the user is not have have not locked the uh, computer a lot of uh, attacks can take place and protect mobile devices yeah obviously you have to uh, protect your mobile devices with passwords and all those things so uh, this session was like majorly focused majorly focused on uh, you guys to get into the cyber security path to get the grip i mean like to get the grip of it so uh, and to that thing i ha- i will strongly suggest you to practice from now now on so it is not you know like this is the correct time because uh, to me i have uh, i have have lost lot of times uh, in the college i didn't even know that there is a cyber security i mean like i was actually thinking there is only a hacker present i didn't know there was a a white hat hacker a gray hat hacker present so so that thing is like so that's what i'm saying from now on you keep uh, practicing all those uh, platforms i mean i have uh, suggested some platforms like there is a thing called hack the box so in order to uh, you know like uh, uh, know the attacks and uh, mm, attacks and uh, vulnerabilities found in the network you could use this thing and port speaker you could use the, uh, that website will uh, it is actually one of the best to learn the web application penetration testing and these things uh, are the uh, you know like uh, softwares i mean softwares are application that you can download and you can perform it in your uh, uh, system itself 
and this is related to the mobile application device if you just google it you could see and uh, as i was talking about this that actually this uh, cyber security has a lot of knowledge around the internet but since but since you are a beginner you will not have a proper uh, you know like a guidance to uh, follow what are the things to you know so in that part uh, certifications help you majorly okay uh, so that thing comptia security players and giac security uh, these things certified ethical hacker computer hacking forensic investigator so these are the basic things which will give you knowledge as well as uh, you know like a lot of knowledge uh, to you as an uh, as a fresher uh, when you are entering into this field so uh, the final part is like um, earning money in cyber security so as i said uh, uh, the one who has a hacked uh, instagram he has been given pro- provided with a 40 lakhs 40 lakhs i guess i am not correct i guess so this is called as a bug bounty program so you can find any bugs which is uh, i mean like there are some uh, platforms you could use like hacker one buckcrowd or snack if you join these things they will provide you some you know like uh, uh, some targets which you have to try hacking it just think about it guys you, if you have some free time you could just do this like if you have some knowledge of you could learn uh, you could grasp any knowledge from the uh, uh, internet and you could apply all those things in this uh, particular uh, platform and if you find any vulnerabilities regarding these things you're going to uh, get paid and if you submit these things and once the once it is reviewed and once it is a proper vulnerability you are going to pay 1000 lakhs and even crores who knows so this is the uh, major part of uh, you know like cyber security you don't have to really work on this thing you could sit in your home you could do all those stuff you could earn money like anything and there are a lot of scenarios my friends have uh, even got a home <laughs> bikes and everything just by doing this bug bounty so it's so it goes like that way and that's it guys uh, i guess this session like really make you interest uh, in coming into the security cyber security field actually there are a lot of stuffs to be discussed but since there's no uh, you know like time and since you are a uh, standard of uh, 10th 12th and uh, uh 11th so i guess this would be the basic for you guys to know i mean this would be enough to know later we can focus on uh, other for, for the sessions so thank you guys uh, if any questions you could uh, just comment it in the uh, comment box and we will end the session so okay and um, yeah let's end the session i guess no one has a question and uh, if you have any doubts or if you want to follow up anything regarding the cyber security please do contact me i'll uh, be uh, i'll be putting my email address in the uh, comment section so thank you guys bye bye have a great day